so why is Linux just better? Oh, we all know the answer to that. Hello, I'm Sprungles. You probably know who I am in the Linux community at this point. Linux, Linux Tube Alex, and we've been on a tag team on the channel for a while, and I'm hoping to try to get some content out for you guys. First, let's go ahead and roll the intro. But to begin with, why is Linux just better than Windows? Okay. To begin with, package management, right? On Windows, you either have to use Winget, which is their package manager, which is good for what it is, but it only came out in when the later versions of Windows 10, right? You know, Linux has had a package manager since the beginning. Right, I can just open up a terminal, so Alacrity is what I use, and I can just go sudo dnf install gedit for instance right i already have this installed it's not going to actually install but let's say i do it right it asks for a simple password just like you would on windows but here's the thing my package manager has parallel downloads which means it downloads everything very very fast on windows you just gotta wait for however long it takes for the file to download which typically is not optimized as much second have you seen some of the, the art made for Linux wallpapers? They're phenomenal. I mean, just look at what I have here. I went online, I grabbed a bunch, I moved them to user share wallpapers. And now I have all of these, these phenomenal wallpapers. These ones on the bottom just came with the distribution itself. I can't ask for anything better than that. Does Microsoft have a few variants that are okay? Yes. But if you want more, you got to go to the Microsoft Store. Unless you go download and put them in yourself, which you have to do one by one. Three. You know how many resources this uses? Not many. Right, if I go back to Alacrity, I'm just going to run my fast fetch real quick. And you'll see here, I'm only using four gigabytes of RAM. For everything. You know how much Windows uses? At least six. Unless you've ripped out a bunch of stuff. Oh, and then let's not even start with how many processes are running in the background in comparison. That's a whole other thing to get into. Why else is Linux just a little bit better? Oh, we know where this is going, right? Customization. I open up my KDE settings panel. And look here. I can change the entire interface within a few buttons. What can you do on Windows? At least as of Windows 11, not a whole lot. You can change colors and that's about it. And they call that customization. That's not up and cool for me at least. So if I wanted to go in here and go to the application style, the way the applications look, I could go to the plasma style, which is KDE Plasma's look. I could go to colors, just color schemes, basically. The window decorations, what you see like on the top of each window, like that. I could also go to my fonts. I can install whatever fonts I want. I don't have to use the ones that Microsoft decides like they would on Windows. I can go to my cursors, like right now I have a Microsoft type cursor because I really like it called Vibati, Vibata. Then I have the icons, right? I can make it look however I want. Then I have my font management stuff, which is even more about fonts. Last but not least, I have the splash screen option between when I'm logging in and actually getting to my desktop. You know what you get on Windows? Absolutely nothing. Oh, I'm about to pick a little on Windows here for a second. The next thing is updates. If I want to run updates, I don't have to. At least on Fedora, I don't have to. You don't technically have to on any distribution. It's recommended on rolling releases, though. So let's say I open up a terminal, right? I just got to run sudo, dnf, in this instance, whatever package manager, upgrade, or dash SYYU if you're on Arch. 
and you hit enter, you type in your super secret password. And you want to do its thing. If it finds anything, cool. Then you'll go ahead and hit Y for yes and let it do its thing. If it doesn't, you don't have any updates. You can do it by the terminal or you can do it using another application such as Discover, PAMAC, whatever GUI application front end you have for applications and system updates. In this instance, I'm on Fedora, right? So I can go to the updates, let it fetch for updates, see if we have any. This might pop up a few for flat packs. Yep, right here. Just hit update all. Watch how fast this is. It's done. You know how long Windows updates take? A long time. A very long time. Oh, and you know what else is absolutely phenomenal about Linux? If you grab the latest image, you typically don't have very many updates whenever you first install it. I've noticed whenever you install a Windows, you're stuck on an older version, so then they make you update over and over and over again. Just so you can get to the latest version. A very poor tactic in my personal opinion. And then next we have the software availability. It's absolutely oh, crazy the amount of software in here. I have Vivaldi, I have Firefox, which you typically have on Windows and a lot of people use. My Telegram client, I have what's themed a little Windows-esque. I just like the, the icons. I have LibreOffice right here, right? This is an alternative to Word, which you can change the formatting of if you'd like. You have an IRC client called Conversation here. We have the Discord client. We have other different clients here. Oh, and then you saw Discover from earlier, my software manager, think of like an app store. Then we have other things like my VPNs. I have my OBS that we're using right now. I also have an email client. Not everybody uses that anymore. They just use it in the browser, but I know I prefer it. It keeps things in the same spot. And then I have what's an alternative to Excel, so LibreOffice Calc. Then we have VLC to watch video content or whatever it may be I'd like to watch. Then we have Cast for my podcast that I listen to. I mean, there's so much availability. But the big thing that we haven't even got started in at all in the Linux part is the real customization. This is just the beginning. If you want to have customization, you go get Hyperland or i3 or any other compositor or window manager and you can just find them. I mean, look, we're going to look up some images of Hyperland configs. You can't tell me these look gorgeous. I mean, they take time to set up, but they are phenomenal. They're really well done. They're very efficient. If you like efficiency, if you like just the way things look, I mean, there's so many options out there. But guess what you get with Windows? The one look. The one type of functionality. If you want to install drivers, you have to do it with essentially modules, which are your executables. But with Linux, all of that's already baked in for you. Unless you want something extra that Linux doesn't provide. But they do that with something called DKMS modules, for instance. And those are very simple, very fast to set up. You don't have to really do a whole lot to make them work. Like, to make this webcam work, for instance, I did install something called V4L2 Loopback. You know how fast that was? Install the package using DNF like I did earlier. Reboot the computer and I was done. That was it. This is why Linux is just superior to Windows at this point. You may have the corporate-backed backing of Microsoft on Windows, which a lot of people will argue. But then my thing... And big response to that is, but you know, we have, we have the corporate backing of enterprise Linux, which means we get a lot more secure updates. We get a lot more of them. We get a lot of everything that's needed, not just this extra bloat that seems to be added every six months like they do over on Windows. So Windows is inferior to Linux at this point. 
because I can play the games that I want to play over on Windows on Linux using Proton or Wine or use Gloria Agrils, one of the developer's variants of those. It's going to work great. You can use something called Bottles to make it easy to do that. You can use something like Heroic Game Launcher to play your Epic Game Store games. It's all there. You just got to look for the pieces. Once you find the pieces and you find exactly the setup you want for you, it's your game. You play the game exactly how you want it. Thank you guys for listening in today. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video today. If you really liked it, give it a like, comment, and subscribe. And that, if you want to hear any more about this, go and make sure that like button is slammed. And please leave a comment for sure letting me know. If you need anything at all, I'm always open on Discord. If you need anything, of course... And then please go ahead and join the Linux 2 Discord. And, and we'll hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.